Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel, Portly Gentleman. My name is Bradley. I'm so happy to have you here. In today's video, I'm going to go over the key differences between the Brewbilt X1 Unitank Fermenter and the Brewbilt X1 Plus Unitank Fermenter. If you'd like to learn even more about home brewing and home brewing equipment, I would really appreciate it if you would subscribe and brew along with me. Research it, mash it, boil it, ferment it, drink it, analyze it, share it. Home brewing is good. A few months ago, I had a chance, courtesy of Simi Valley Homebrew, located in Simi Valley, California. They actually lent me a Brewbuild X1 right when they first came out. I don't think anyone had them yet, and I got to do a hands-on video and just keep it for a couple of days, not use it, but try it out. This one I have courtesy of Brewbuilt and More Beer, so if you guys have any questions, you can either pick one up at Simi Valley Homebrew or obviously BrewbuiltMoreBeer.com. Certainly they can take care of you or any other a retailer's genus brewing i know those guys are also a brew built uh, retailer and if you're in the area buy one from genus or simi valley homebrew in simi valley california one of the key differences one thing you get is this neoprene jacket it's pretty heavy duty it's you know neoprene it's not too special but it is on account it has velcro and not zippers you can also put this on without having to have you know the wheels or bottom plate taken off of your unit tank fermenter because the Brewbuild X1 series uses uh, these metal rods, more like a commercial tank, to stabilize the legs. And it's super simple to install. It literally just goes right over the top. You put it on with the lid on? Who the hell knows? Am I gonna rip it? I hope not. I hope not. I don't wanna have to explain. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, come on baby. Come on, baby. Oh, yeah. Let's get it up. Oh, Ooh. oh, daddy like. That Velcro is really strong. So clearly, as I disappear behind this, guys, you can put this on with a lot of stuff on the tank. I'm off camera here because that's what I do on Bradley. I'm back. I was, I was messing around behind the unit tank. So these handles that just slip on, it's, this is really self-explanatory stuff. Hopefully, by fixing this, I fixed some glare and I fixed my audio. Pretty good. Velcro in the front. Whew, that's easy. Man, I'm kind of liking the Velcro. So there it is, the jacket installed on the Brewbill X1. We're on the way to being the plus. The next up you're gonna have is the cooling stick. Brewbill has actually made these for um, carboys and various other fermenters. I've always been curious about them. I'm so thankful to have a chance to play with it. It's got these uh, quick connects and other quick connect uh, like shark bitey fittings or the in and out higher and lower. It's basically just a tube with another tube in it and once it fills up it pushes out of your glycol or whatever you're using to chill your wort. I'm eager to see how good this works on the 14 gallon model. I've heard in the 7 it's pretty good but the 14 is I think a lot larger relatively compared to this. So I'm wondering if it performs as well or not. I'll report back once I fully test this unit tank fermenter. Only one little nitpick with this. The weld in the bottom here could be polished a little bit better, but I still think this is probably sanitary and good enough. Next you get the pressure pack and that's this four inch top with an inch and a half tri-clamp opening. That's so you could slide the cooling stick right there inside of the top of this guy. It's also got very clearly labeled out and in gas posts. On the out, you're able to set up one of these floating dip tube attachments that if you haven't tried for one of your uh, torpedo kegs or corning kegs, I highly recommend. And you're able to rack the clearest wort possible. Coming out of the unit tank, I don't know how great that's gonna be. Um, typically in my experience, I've always transferred pretty clear wort once I've done a proper cold crash. On the top, it has a welded loop here, and this will allow you to dangle hop bags or something inside of your fermenter if you wanted to dry hop or add hops or flavoring to your beer that way. Next up is the one that I, I'm honestly the most curious about. It's this flex chamber. I believe this chamber, they sell it separately. It has a two inch tri-clamp on the top. It's plastic. Uh, it's called Triton. They're very proud of the plastic. I know that it, they have some warnings. You definitely don't want to leave this pressurized with fermenting beer in it because it will explode, but it's okay for some pressure, clearly. And it seals with an O-ring, but basically this guy could potentially let you low oxygen dry hop or dump trube in a very low oxygen manner without having to go, you know, to top down. I have said previous videos 
that I'm a big fan of gravity. Gravity just works. I'm really anxious to give this a try because I think you can buy this part a la carte for 30 or 40 US dollars, which in my eyes compared to other options, if you're just getting into the hobby and you wanna try the ultra low oxygen hopping out, I think that's really good value compared to other options out there. This is also a two inch tri-clamp flange on here. So you could literally probably put this on anything with a two inch tri-clamp port. It has two Coke bottle caps on either side. So you could hook up a carbonation cap and purge it of CO2. I believe there is also a carbonation stone attachment for this you could put in here. I don't have that yet, but I am trying to get one. It'll allow you to carbonate your, your beer from the flex chamber itself. So I'm super eager to try out the flex chamber. I really wanna see what it's about and see how good it works. My, my, I've had experience with other fermenters that use a similar design. They got stuck. I think this one has a better designed O-ring and seal. Definitely opening this one. It's, if there's any kind of pressure in your beer, you're gonna make a mess. You don't wanna make sure to get a plate or something underneath the fermenter to catch that if you care. As this is the second brew built unit tank that I've had a chance to get my hands on, I will say this one is nearly as nice as the first one I got, which was their very first production one. That one was literally picture perfect. It was mind blowingly perfect. This one is very good. It's not quite that good. I'm just gonna be honest, but it's still really good and it compares very well against the rest of the competition that I've had a chance to have hands-on experience with. So that's really quick a look at what makes the Brewbuild X1 Plus different from the Brewbuild X1. All of these parts are available aftermarket. If you are looking to upgrade your current X1 to the Plus model, you could pick and choose what you want. I will have links directly to everything below. Those are my More Beer affiliate links, guys, full transparency. I will get a small commission if you should buy any of those items. Um, I would really appreciate it. It helps the channel. Buy these from your local homebrew shop. You know, Simi Valley Homebrew comes to mind, as well as Genus Brewing. I know both of those shops and YouTuber are retailers of Brewbuilt products, and I really recommend you go there. Worst case scenario, you go to More Beer Online and you get it in a couple of days. What are you guys most curious about? Obviously, I'm curious, well, pretty much everything I'm curious about, the, the flex chamber, the cooling stick, how it works. Let me know in the comments below what you want to see me cover first, and if I've missed anything, please include that below. I will be happy to cover it in a future video. Remember, as always, this has been Bradley. Home brewing is good, and I'll see you real, real soon. X1 Plus. Wicka, 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 wicka. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, too dark. Oh, it's, this whole thing is going to be overexposed. It's too much light. Too much. I'm going to get a sunburn. No. No, more light the better, right? Lighting is king. Yeah, no, I like this thing. It is interesting. That's a wrap.